All right, welcome back, everybody. Today is the day you're going to learn how to play Sunshine of Your Love by none other than Cream and the great Eric Clapton. This is an absolute staple for all classic rock fans. And this solo is really illustrative to me on just how to mix major and minor pentatonic scales together. And it's just a masterpiece, and we're going to go through it today. So if you like this kind of thing and you haven't done so already, please jump down right now and click subscribe and ring the bell, which lets you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have chapters in them, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson that you want to see and bypass what you don't. And if you're looking for ways to support the channel, I really appreciate that. There's um, thanks, which is a button right there. You can, it's just like throwing a tip in the tip jar. Or you can join my Patreon page where I've got uh, chord charts and tabs for all the lessons that I do on YouTube like this one. All the links are in the description. Check it out. All right, so Sunshine of Your Love. So this is great. Um, this is uh, it's just such a great sort of defining period of 60s Eric Clapton, right? And uh, we've heard this song on the radio so much in our life. And it sort of becomes background noise a little bit. But when you listen to it with fresh ears and just really dig in, it's such a great just piece of guitar work on all that. So. We're going to cover the rhythm guitar approach, um, how he's playing those pieces, and of course the great um, lead guitar section too. Okay, so let's get to the rhythm guitar section. So in terms of tone, you know, it's just, I have to imagine it's, I think he's using an SG on these sessions. Um, it sounds like SG and a Marshall to me, um, uh, but who knows with all the studio magic. So. Um, I'm going with that good amount of overdrive and with Eric Clapton, you know, in this era, he mixes in sort of a, just a great semi woman tone, you know, where you're sort of rolling the tone off a little bit. Um, and so I'm going to try and try and approximate that here. So I'm going to be playing mostly on the neck pickup, um, for what I'm illustrating here. And I'm sort of rolling off the tone a little bit and I'm actually rolling the volume back a little bit, um, especially during the um, rhythm guitar section. I think it helps that tone clean up just a little bit. So I'm sounding like this. So that's what I'm going with. You can check out what I'm using in terms of gear down below in the description if you're curious. Okay, so let's talk about the rhythm guitar section. So this is standard tuning. Um, and uh, I feel like he's playing this off of the sort of major bar chord position here up at the 10th fret. And like I said, I think he's living on the neck pickup to my ear. I've got the tone rolled down a little bit. But, you know, here's the main figure. So that's the main sort of riff that you're hearing. And he does little you know, improvs off of that. You can hammer on, right? Slide into a note if you want. Right, you want to give that a bit of a wiggle there. And he sort of does, you know, a version with that low. And then he comes back with a little bit of a higher version with that same, you know, same notes, an octave up. All right, so you can sort of do it with your chord shape. So you can either play it single note, which is, I think, how they open the song. taking your D chord and you're sort of riffing on those six through four, uh, six through str three strings like that. And then you do one of these. So it's, it's like that. But you sort of are not precise about it sort of give that the emphasis. Whoops. Right. Okay, 
So version one. That's version two. Same notes, just an octave apart. Then it goes to a G, which is your the fourth of the chord, right? In the classic blues one four five tradition, um, and it's sort of recreating that same interval based off of that chord. Without the mistake. Then uh, you're going to hit an A chord. And I can't really tell if it's a cowboy A or a, you know, bar chord A. Either way, it'll sound great. CG. That's it. Hit it really hard, you know. It's funny when you listen to those old, you know, Cream and um, uh, and even the sort of John Mayall stuff that Clapton did right before Cream. You know. Everyone wants to listen to the, and me too, the great lead stuff that he does. But when you really listen to the rhythm guitar stuff that he does, the, the sound that he gets is so great, whether it's on a Les Paul or an SG or, you know, the Firebird or whatever he, he moved into, but it's so tough sounding. And I know he like eschewed all Gibson and went to Fender, you know, late 60s and in the 70s and beyond. Man, those Gibson years were so great. He probably milked all the tone you could probably great get out of it, and he wanted to go Fender from that point on, but something really special about that. Anyway, so that's all of the rhythm chord. I think at the end of the song, it sounds like it's an open A chord, doesn't it? During the end, it sounds like that to me, but... Okay, so let's talk about the lead. Now, the lead... Um, like I said earlier, it's this perfect example of Eric Clapton mixing minor pentatonic scale and major pentatonic scale together. And all the greats do it. Um, and he's just masterful on it. Um, and this is just a great example. So uh, I'm going to roll my volume up a little bit um, just to stand out here. But let's jump into the solo now. So the solo is going to start at the minor pentatonic you know, position on the uh, D, um, and it's going to start with the bend. Right, so if you think of our, that pentatonic scale, that's what we're uh, starting off. Now we're going to come down to our major pentatonic, and you probably all know this, but if you don't know this, you can take that same pattern and slide it down three frets, and you're in the same key, now you're major. Mind blown? If you haven't known that before, that will blow your mind, but that's what we're doing here. Um, so that's the first part is up here, the second part. Here's our D. Right. So those first parts together. Love that. Great, Ben. All right, and then we sort of come back up. Now our next chord is a G. So from this position, he just sort of grabs the seventh of the G and bends up an F note. 
Right, so you're sort of playing with that G and then bouncing back to your major D. Right. And we're going to do this little... Love that. Very melodic, great little line, so... So that's all sort of off of the major. Now we're going to slide up and we're going to go back to minor pentatonic stuff. So when you think of our ma minor pentatonic position again, if you move that box up to your next position, now we're going to be playing in that box. All right, so we were here. Great, that little major note. So that slide up is, and you think of it as a D7 chord, right? You're just doing that part of a D7 chord. And you might know this sort of lick where you're sort of, you know, it's sort of going off of that idea. It's minor than major. Yeah, it's that. You do a minor. And then I think you end on that little major. So again, just a little thing, right? Just throwing that little major note in there. It just changes the complexity um, or the complexion, I guess, of the emotion there. It's just great. D note. Back to our rock. And this is the part where it's going over the A, C, G chain. And all he's going to do with his lead is just rip on D minor pentatonic. slide up to our D position again. All right, now that slide up is going to be something like this. Something around there. And then back down. I think you're back to that sort of D home position because of that that lick that was right at the end. It just sort of all falls under your fingers really nicely there. And then you're going to come out of it. This is where he's jamming on A. And he gets a second string in there. It's great. It's either it's either that one or it's it's either that or Either one sounds great, but... Okay, I choked that one. Either or one of those. <laughs> it's 
really hard when you do that slow because you're just playing all your life at speed, right? Um, okay, just a great way to come out of that um, solo, right? But all of it's D minor pentatonic. So let me run through the whole thing and let me see if I can do it um, <laughs> somewhat slower without tripping. Here we go. got all the way through it but that's it um but that is a great just an awesome solo i don't need to tell you but a great solo that you know illustrates how to move back and forth between major and minor pentatonic um which is all over classic rock and um, just a great one to get under your fingers so that is sunshine of your love by cream and uh Eric Clapton, of course, and I hope you learned something new. If you haven't done so already and you like what you just saw, jump right down now and click subscribe and ring the bell. It lets you know when I drop new content, which I do every single week. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do a lesson like this, let me know what that is. Okay? Well, until next week, take care, everybody. <laughs>